Hey guys, so today's video is going to focus on how to graph the following functions. So we have a parabola here, and then we're going to answer the following questions about it. We're going to find the vertex, the domain, range, axis of symmetry, where it's increasing and decreasing, and what are its zeros. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this problem. So the function they gave us is f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 6. So do notice the degree of this function. So the highest power is a 2, which means that this is a parabola. So remember, a parabola has the U shape. A positive parabola goes up like this. A negative parabola goes down like that. Now, ours is a positive parabola because this leading term here, x squared, is positive. So ours is going to look like the u right over here. But we need a little bit more information to figure out exactly where this is going to go on our coordinate system. So unfortunately, the first thing that we need to do with this function here is put it in vertex form. It's currently uh, in its standard form, and as it is like this, uh, we can't do a lot with it as far as graphing is concerned. So when it comes to graphing straight from the formula, we want it in vertex form because vertex form is going to tell us a lot more about what our graph is going to look like. So just in case you forgot, I have, gra uh, I have vertex form right over here on the right side of the screen. So f of x is equal to a uh, parentheses x minus h squared plus k. Now, in order to go from this form to vertex form, what we're actually going to have to do is complete the square. I do have a video for completing the square. If you need to review that concept, I would pause this video, go back and maybe watch that um, if you need a refresher, and then come back to this because this is something you're going to have to do on a regular basis in order to graph given these kind of functions here. Otherwise, in order to complete the square, so our leading coefficient here is a 1, which is what we want. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to separate the first two terms and then the last term. The constant, you always move off to the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up factoring here. Uh, we need to factor these three terms, the first two here, we're going to create this magic third term that is going to factor this into a perfect binomial square. And that's what we're looking for when it comes to completing the square. Now, in order to come up with that magic number right over here, that is this one-half b squared formula. You've probably seen that before, hopefully you've seen that before. Uh, inputting uh, into this little mini formula here is what's going to give you that magic number over here that's going to allow us to graph, I mean, to factor this perfectly. So remember that b is the coefficient of your x term, so your x to the first power term. So our coefficient for x is a 2. So I'm going to put in 1 half times 2 squared is what I need to do. Well, half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. So I am going to add in a 1 here. Now, also be careful, we're not completely done with this part here. If I'm going to add a 1 to this equation, I also need to minus a 1 to this equation. i got to keep it balanced. I can't just add a 1 just to add a 1 because um, it's going to throw off what this equation actually equals. So if I'm going to input something, I need to take it away. Um, so if I'm going to plus 1 over here, I need to minus 1, but I'm going to put that minus 1 back over here with my number. Okay, so it's just something we do with this. So what that's going to allow me to do is now my function can be factored. This can actually be factored to x plus 1 times x plus 1, which happens to just be x plus 1 squared. We combine those two factors. Uh, so use whatever factoring technique. I call it reverse FOIL. Remember that x times x gives us x squared. The 1 times 1 gives us this 1 back here. Right, and the 1x plus the 1x gives us that 2x. So it does factor into this. So we shorthand it here by doing the x plus 1 squared. And then all we have to do is tack on our number here at the end. We had a negative 6, but remember we subtracted 1 from it. So that is now going to give us a minus 7. So this is our new equation here in vertex form, x plus 1 squared minus 7. That's going to give us a little bit more information here about what this graph is going to look like. So give me a little bit here. I'm going to uh, graph this out. So let's see. Yeah, let's hope that I have enough space here. 
The first thing I'm going to grab for this is the vertex. Remember that the vertex is your HK in your formula. So that is what the vertex equals, the H and the K, which is this 1 and this minus 7. But also keep in mind that that H, you always take the opposite sign of what you have. So since I have a 1 here, my H is really going to be a negative 1. And then back over here, I have a minus 7. That's just a straight minus 7. There's nothing funny going on with the signs there. So it's always the opposite of the inside and then what this outside number is. So this tells me that my vertex is negative 1, negative 7. So if I graph that right over here, that's what my vertex is. It is negative 1, negative 7. And again, that came straight from our formula here. It's your H and your K. So you can see over here on the vertex formula, your H and your K right over there, ignoring the minus sign that's inside that formula. So that's why ours is a minus 7. Okay. So what the vertex also tells us here, the vertex is very important when it comes to a parabola because the vertex is your midpoint in your parabola. So this is what a parabola typically looks like here. The vertex is this middle point right over here. And what we hopefully know about parabolas is they're symmetrical. So if I pretended that there was a line right over here perfectly on that vertex, and if I were to fold this graph in half, right, if this were a piece of paper and I, paper and I folded it right on the line, everything on the left should match up with everything on the right-hand side of the graph. So here, for example, D, they're actually asking for the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is a straight vertical line. What you need to remember about the equation of a straight vertical line is those equations look like x equal and then whatever that x value is. So our vertex, since it's on a negative 1 here, so we can say that the axis of symmetry is this negative 1 line right over here. This is where our graph is going to fold in on itself essentially. And because the x value here is negative 1, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. It's that simple. Take the x value where your vertex is and take x is equal to whatever that number is. All right, so we got the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Um, so let's go ahead and try and graph a couple of, or plot a couple more points so we can see what the full extent of our graph looks like. Now when it comes to a parabola, you typically need at least a minimum of three points. Some people go further to do five, but you definitely need your vertex and then you need one point on each side. Some people like to do an additional point on each side to have five. I'm just going to do the one on each side. I think that'll be good enough to get an idea of what our graph looks like. Um, depending on your teacher, you know, they might ask for three, they might ask for five, they might give you some x values to already input. But since I know that my vertex is at negative one, what I want to do is I'm just going to pick a number on each side. I'm going to pick negative two and then I'm going to pick zero and see what's happening on each side of this graph. So I'm picking negative two and then zero. So then all I have to do real quickly is take each one of those numbers and plug it into my equation to see what I get. So I'm going to find f of negative 2 first. All right, so that means I'm plugging in negative 2 for x to see what I get for y. Now, negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. And negative 1 squared, so negative 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 minus 7 is a negative 6. So when I input negative 2, I get a negative 6. That gives me another point for my graph. So that means I have negative 2 and then 6 right over there. And since parabolas are symmetrical, I can assume that when I plug in 0, I'm also going to get a negative 6. But we can verify that just to be sure. And we can do f of 0. Um, is going to equal 0 plus 1 squared minus 7, which means we get 1 inside the parentheses here as well. That gives us 1 squared minus 7. 1 times 1 is 1, so we get 1 minus 7, which is also a negative 6. So you can see we got one point either side right over here. So my graph is going to do something that looks like this. Afterwards, I'm kind of just almost assuming I'm going with kind of the guide of what it looks to be. 
Um, again, you know, pay attention to how many points that your specific teacher is asking you to do for these. Um, but as long as we're answering all these questions, we have a very good look at what this graph is going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and answer B and C um, for uh, our example here. So B is asking for the domain. So the domain is the span of all of your x values for your graph. So completely looking right, completely looking right, because remember domain refers to your x values, your x axis, that's your left and right, is where would your graph hit? How far does it span out on the x axis? Now, pay attention to your graph. Typically, when you have a graph that has an arrow going both ways, again, this arrow here on the left, this arrow here on the right, even though this graph is going up, it is also going out, and it's going to go further and further and further and further, and it's never going to stop. So when we give a domain, we always give a domain in interval notation. So it's always surrounded by parentheses or brackets. And we have our leftmost answer, and then we have our rightmost answer. So how far left does our graph go? How far right does our graph go? Since we have arrows on either side here, this graph is going to keep going on and on and on and on. It's never going to stop. And when it doesn't stop, we call that infinity. On the left-hand side, that is negative infinity. On the right-hand side, that is positive infinity. So that is our domain for this particular graph, just because it keeps going on forever. Now, our range is very similar, except our range is the span of all of our y values. So that's your y-axis that is going up and down. So your range, again, is going to be parentheses or brackets. Uh, infinities always have parentheses. Brackets, you would use it if it was a solid number. Um, so our range is going to be what's our bottom, our lowest, most uh, y value, and then what's our highest. So with range, you want to start down and you want to look up. So if I'm starting down, my graph isn't down here, right? My graph doesn't start until I get to this point here. And once I get to this point, it's going to keep going up and up and up and up, right? So for the range, my lowest point is this one right over here. So we're looking at the y-axis, right? So it touches this right here, which is a negative 7. And then it's going to keep going up, 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 up. And again, it has an arrow here. It's never going to stop. So that is an infinity for the top. So it goes from negative 7 to infinity, since there's nothing going on down here. So negative 7 will have a bracket because this is a solid dot at negative 7. It does include that, uh, that number right over there. It is going to have a parentheses for the infinity just because parentheses, I mean, infinity always has parentheses. You can never get to infinity. Uh, the next thing that we're going to answer here is where is this graph increasing and decreasing here? These are also given in interval notation. Uh, increasing and decreasing, and these are using x values. So going left to right, where is my graph increasing? Where is my graph decreasing? And this is how that works. Okay. So I want you to pretend okay, that you are standing on top of this graph. So I know this is very, very steep, but pretend that you're sta standing right here on this edge. So a parabola is very similar to like, uh, if you've ever been to a skating park, you know, the, the bowls that they skate in and stuff like that. So pretend our person here is standing at the edge here and he's going to walk this graph or however you want to think about it, right? He's going to be going down, 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 down here, and then he's going to level out, and then he's going to be climbing up, 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 up. So the way that it works with increasing and decreasing is increasing is where would you be going up, where would you be climbing, going upstairs, however you want to think about it. If your person is walking up, that is increasing. If your person is walking down, going downhill, then it's decreasing. All right, and we need to give the span of values. From here to here, if he's decreasing, from here to here, he's increasing type of thing. So. And again, this always goes from left to right, is how we scan our graph. So starting from the left, again, keep in mind this arrow keeps on going. So from the left, he's starting however high that is, right? It's infinity. So, but regardless, he's going to be standing on an edge here, and he's going to be going down, down, down. So starting at infinity, he's going to be going down, 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 until he gets to this point right over here. 
Because when he gets to this point here, he's all of a sudden going to switch, and then he's going to be going up. All right, so from here to here, this is decreasing because he's going down. Now, we just need to write what are the x values for that. So on the left, this is infinity. On the right, this is a negative 1. Remember, we're using x values for this. So from negative infinity to negative 1, he's going to be going down. All right, so de er, decreasing is negative infinity to negative 1. When the person gets at negative 1 right over here, he's going to switch and he's going to start climbing up. And he's going to be going up, 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 and he's never going to stop. He's going to go off to positive infinity. So he starts going up at the negative 1 here, and then he's going to keep going, keep going, keep going into a positive infinity. All right, so negative infinity to negative 1, since that's your vertex, that's your turning point, and then from negative 1 off to positive infinity is how that works. Okay, so the only thing left for us to work on here is to find the zeros for this particular graph. So remember, the zeros are where our graph crosses the x-axis. Now, remember, I did the vertex in these two points, and then I kind of just sketched it on up. So these points right here aren't exactly precise. And again, when it comes to most graphs, um, you can't always base it off of your eye. The way that you do it here, you need to calculate it and do it algebraically and actually find the answer for it. So the way that you find zeros giving any equation is you set the equation equal to zero and then you solve it. So I'm going to take our equation here in vertex form, set it equal to zero, and what I get as my answer here is going to be my zeros. So if I'm solving this equation, the first thing I'm going to do is add 7 to both sides to give me 7 is equal to x plus 1 squared. We need to undo this square here. So remember the opposite of a square is a square root. So I need to do that to both sides, giving me the square root of 7 is equal to the x plus 1. And that is plus or minus 7. Um, and the only thing left to do to solve for x is subtract 1 on both sides. So it looks that we have plus or minus 7 minus 1 is equal to x. So that is going to be our zeros here. Now, uh, we do need to put them in point form. So remember, when it comes to putting it in point form, your y values are always 0. So our first 0 will be negative square root of 7 minus 1, and then 0. And then it'll be positive square root of 7 minus 1, uh, 0, for our two zeros here, because we have the plus and we have the minus. All right, so just set your equation equal to 0 and solve. Otherwise, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, otherwise, see you next time.